Hi everyone, welcome to episode 41 of Off The Sprue. I'm currently working on the T72 tank and in this video I'll show you how to create wood grain and chipped paint effects. Now in episode 40 you'll remember that um, I started assembling the, uh, the T72M from this vac. This is really a beautiful kit, uh, ideal kit if you're a novice uh, modeler. And uh, in this video, I'll be taking the uh, building process a step further and uh, adding an unditching beam. I'll explain what that is a bit later, as well as some external fuel tanks. We'll be uh, adding the usual primer and base coat uh, on, the, on the unditching beam. I'll show you how to create wood grain effects with oils. Very easy to do, actually. And uh, on the fuel tanks, I'll be adding some, uh, some rust and some chip paint effects. This build is of course a sponsored build and uh, first a word from the sponsor. Guys, if you go to supernovastudio.durban and if you live in South Africa, you can uh, purchase the, uh, the T72M kit that I'm building at the moment. Uh, from Supernova Studio, they offer a special discount to uh, Off The Sprue viewers. So do stick around and uh, at the end of this video, I'll be giving you a special promo code with which you uh, can get a lot of discount. Now, at this point in the uh, instructions, you'll notice this, uh, this wooden beam as well as some external fuel tanks. And uh, I had to go do a fair amount of research on this. An unditching beam is actually a very crude recovery device for, uh, for tanks, mostly Soviet era uh, tanks like the D-72. And this is used to get um, stuck tanks out of muddy and marshy conditions. Very clever indeed. Now the kit part is beautifully detailed. You can see there it is. Uh, as well as the, uh, as the rear external fuel tanks uh, are molded as a, as a round drum, which is quite unique. Usually these are two separate halves. First step, of course, is to cut this from the sprue. And uh, you'll remember I gave you some, some tips on doing this in the previous video. And uh, after cleaning up just some, some minor seams, this is ready for paint and for primer. I started by adding a few more splits in the wood, typically as you would see in, uh, in a long wooden pole. And I also extended the, the splits to the center of the sides. For this, I used a scraping tool. Now to paint and detail this part, we'll need a, a way of hanging on to it while we work on it. And uh, for this, I drilled a small hole and uh, then used a paper clip and uh, fixed this to the uh, the part as a handle, easy way of hanging on to it. Next is primer and I'm using my new favorite primer from uh, Mr. Hobby, the uh, finishing surfacer and uh, in this case the black one. This is um, applied to the part with the airbrush in a smooth coat and you can see the results. Also the additional uh, split wood that I added with the, uh, the scraping tool. This is now ready for paint and uh, the base color that I'm using is from Vallejo, uh, wood color. I apply this in an even coat across the entire beam, similar to what you're seeing there. And uh, to do the wood grain, I'm using colors from uh, Uptailing 502's wood and leather color set. And of course, I'm also using their odorless thinner. I'll also be using uh, these hard bristled uh, brushes basically stippling brushes, as well as my uh, glass palette insert also available from Supernova Studio. Initially I chose four colors from the uh, Uptailing uh, Leather and Wood Oil uh, Paint Set and uh, eventually I uh, ended up using the, uh, the two darkest colors. These are really beautiful paints, uh, especially made for scale modeling purposes. Now because this is a brand new technique to me, I first uh, tried it on a paper straw and uh, that's of course also a good thing because I then rediscovered that oil paint needs a long time to dry. Uh, I got these finger marks on the, uh, the straw. Uh, the first step is to uh, just mask off these uh, attachment brackets. We don't want to get any uh, oil paint on them. And uh, once this is done, I can uh, start to 
apply the oil paint. Now I'll be using this, this brush, basically it's just an old stippling brush and uh, I cut the bristle short and uh, I'll be using it in this fashion, just drawing the paint along the, uh, the length of the beam. This is very much the similar technique as, uh, uh, as dry brushing. First remove some paint from the, from the bristles and then just start drawing it across the length of the beam and you'll see immediately I'm getting a very realistic uh, wood grain uh, finish on this beam. For the, for the edges, I used a stippling brush and uh, the circular motion to get those rings in there. This is the result. I'm certainly very surprised with this. As I said, this was the first time uh, I tried this technique and uh, I was very happy with the results. Of course, oil paint is very different to acrylic paint and it needs a long time to dry. And in this case, I allowed uh, two to three days for the oils to dry. When it was done, I covered it with a uh, matte varnish and then uh, dry brushed the edges with German camo beige, just to give it that uh, worn look on the wood. Once the masking tape is removed from those uh, brackets, this is the final result. I'm certainly very happy with this. As I said, it was the first time I tried this technique and uh, wood grain is not that hard to do. I'll definitely be trying this again in future on ammo crates and uh, similar parts. Now onto the fuel tanks. This is the part in the sprue, beautifully molded, crisp detail uh, on all these parts from Dustwerk. Once they're assembled, we've got two fuel drums on the back, the external fuel drums. First step, as always, applying a finishing surfacer, this one being from Mr. Hobby. And uh, this is applied with the airbrush in an even coat across the entire part. Next, the rust base coat. For this, I'm using Vallejo Rust. And this is now applied onto the primed surface uh, with the airbrush in a smooth uh, motion. Next up, I'm going to use two colors, also from Vallejo, the first being uh, Orange Rust and the other being Dark Rust from the Panzer Aces uh, range. This is now very carefully applied as highlight and shadow colors to the part with the airbrush. And uh, this is the result, very happy with that. And I can move on to some further detailing. The next step is to apply some wash. Now, this is an acrylic wash from Vallejo. And uh, because it's acrylic, it can be diluted with ordinary tap water. This is applied just like uh, all the uh, enamel wash products out there. It, it will use gravity and flow into all, that, uh, all those recessed little spaces. And the important thing to remember when uh, using acrylic washes is that the excess needs to be removed immediately while the product is still wet. This is different than uh, enamel wash in that when it dries on an uh, acrylic paint surface, it's basically stuck. This is not like an enamel wash that you can remove uh, with uh, some odorless thinner. This is acrylic and uh, it needs to be removed with a uh, damp brush with uh, ordinary tap water. That's the result with the wash applied. I'm certainly very happy with this one. The next step is to cover all this artwork with a strong durable varnish and in this case I'm using the satin varnish from Microscale. I'll be doing a chipped paint effect on the uh, second external tank. For this I'm using chipping medium from uh, Vallejo. Of course this is a water based product and uh, the dilution ratio that I use is basically one to one. So if I'm using four drops of uh, chipping medium, I'll also use four drops of ordinary tap water. And of course make sure to mix this properly before you load this into your airbrush. This is now applied onto the part with the, uh, with the airbrush. As with most of my builds, I'll be using Vallejo colors and uh, this one is Iraqi sand. This is the base color that I'll be using. The, uh, the highlight color is ivory and then for the shadows, I'll be using uh, sand yellow and these three colors is something that I'll be using for the rest of the build as well. 
First up is the base coat. This is sprayed with the, uh, with the airbrush across the entire barrel. And once this is done, I add some uh, highlight and shadow tones uh, with the airbrush as well, the ivory and the uh, sand yellow. This is the result, certainly happy with that. And this of course has now been applied onto the, uh, the surface uh, with the chipping medium. Some small additional details that still need to be added are these rings, these attachment rings for the barrels. I'll be using Alclad Steel, which is my favorite metal color. And uh, this is sprayed onto the, uh, onto the tank once the appropriate areas have been masked off. Now in order to uh, make these metal rings look like they uh, have chip paint on them, I'm again going to use Iraqi sand and then the sponge technique. So an ordinary piece of sponge and uh, this is used on a uh, self-closing tweezer and uh, then gently sponged onto the, uh, onto the metal rings similar to what you're seeing there. And uh, if one keeps this up long enough, you'll get a very realistic uh, chip paint effect on those metal rings. That's the result, certainly very happy with that. Still, it's very shiny because of the protective uh, clear coat. And uh, in order to dull it down, I use some ultra matte varnish from uh, Vallejo. And this stuff's very effective to really dull a uh, surface down. For chipping, I'll need three things. First, some water, a uh, toothpick, and then again, my uh, hard bristled brush, the stippling brush that I cut the uh, bristles uh, short. Now to do the chipping, I first moisten the, uh, the surface with the tap water and then start using this hard bristle brush and uh, start chipping away at the painted surface. And you'll see it starts peeling off um, from, the, uh, from the surface because of the chipping medium underneath. In this case, the, uh, the solution was actually quite strong, perhaps a bit stronger than I would have preferred. But this is certainly giving us the, uh, a heavily chipped uh, paint effect, which is uh, still uh, in line with the reference pictures that I have. These external fuel tanks on the back of the T72, um, they all appear to be very heavily, uh, heavily chipped and banged up. Just for some added realism, I used the sponge technique again and added some uh, orange rust to the, uh, to the rusted barrel, similar to what I'm doing there. And uh, then finally, just to finish it off, some uh, protective clear coat on uh, both barrels. The final step is to use a graphite stick or a pencil if you have one, and uh, just uh, rub this along all the, uh, all the exposed surfaces, just to give it that nice realistic uh, metal shine. Guys, and this is it. This is the, uh, the final result of both the unditching beam as well as these uh, external fuel tanks. And there's still a lot of decisions to make. I have to decide whether I'm gonna use both, both these external fuel tanks or just one, but uh, that's a decision for later. As always, a list of all the products that I used, all the Vallejo and uh, Taylor paints are available from Supernova Studio if you're in South Africa. As I mentioned in the beginning, you can get 200 Rand discount on this kit if you use the uh, promo code off the sprue. And uh, guys, do follow me on Instagram if you're curious to follow the progress of this build. I post uh, frequent updates there and uh, you can follow the, uh, the process as I build this kit. Thank you for, for joining me for this video and uh, looking forward to seeing everyone in the next video.